right, hey, welcome back to Wave Squadron. We're here with the Normies. Normies, thank you guys so much for allowing us to to uh, land outside the studio here and <laughs> have a great conversation because you guys invited us onto your finale of yeah. Clone Wars reactions, and it was a fantastic experience. Uh, so thank you very much for being hey. here. Thank you yeah. for being here. Thank you for showing up. We didn't know if you guys were going to come or not. We, just kinda, <laughs> we sent the mail via via postal, and we're just like, I have to show up to show up. We'll get to young pad one to take it over to you guys. Yeah. I would say one of the greatest finales and one of the greatest reactions. You two yeah. were here to give oh, some so more good. context. And mm -hmm. it was nice being in the blind wave sandwich. We still are. <laughs> oh, my God. Check, uh, check it out on our channel. The Norm we're the normies. Yep. We yeah. react. We do sketches, podcasts, gaming. But um, I don't know if that episode is out on YouTube yet. So, but it will be soon. If not, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. You, if you need some time, you're going to be able to watch their entire Clone Wars playlist. It's going to be linked down in the description. Ooh, so yeah. make sure you guys Look are checking that out. It's a lot of fun. Now, the reason I wanted to have this conversation is because, you know, I feel like we as reactors kind of speak a very specific language when it comes to show recommendations, right? Like yeah. you guys kind of got into the situation where The Mandalorian became one of the biggest shows in the world. And suddenly, like, oh, we got to get with this Star Wars thing. And you yeah. got this recommendation. <laughs> Check out this kid show called Star Wars The Clone Wars. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I had so much fun starting that show with you guys, seeing that fresh perspective. Because I think everybody goes through the same thing. This, this You get to season one, you're like, this is what everybody loves? Yeah. <laughs> this cartoon? Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask you. So in 2008, Ahsoka comes on the scene and the entire Star Wars fandom Hated her. Yeah, reasonable. Really? She was, she was Why? I heard about oh, that. this annoying Padawan. Anakin. Ruby. Anakin had a the, Padawan. Yeah, that, that was make another thing. Sense. This this isn't even in the canon. Anakin never had a Padawan. Yeah. Why would he have no. a Padawan? Because they probably saw it as a retcon. And yeah, you don't see her in any of the movies yeah. or at the time any of the other like collective Star Wars yeah. stuff. So she it was never just existed. Like, one of the coolest characters ever. Just got a kid sister to like tag along with. Created for, for the a show. movie. For, for the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely loved her because she was like so headstrong and just like independent yeah. and feisty and confident. And she was such a fun add on for Anakin. Well, that's the thing. Like 20 years later now, not I mean, it's been, I don't know, 15 yeah. years now. Um, almost. Wow. Yeah, 2010 ish, yeah. right? She's one of the most celebrated characters in Star Wars now. Like, when yeah. did that character kind of make the switch for you from like, okay, the little kid to the heart of the show? Can you think about that? I feel like the times where she would borrow from Anakin's nature a little yeah. bit, like how his rebelliousness against mm -hmm. the authority would kind of rub off on her. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think it wasn't until she had adventures off by herself yeah. that I started to appreciate the it. One where she's hanging out with, I'm going to forget his name, so I'm going to call him the Separatist Boy. Uh, and they had a little flirty flirty back and forth. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, she's captured, Death Watch is there, and... She does. This is like the the height of Ahsoka for me was when she because she'd been she'd been cool 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 yeah. cool all the way up until then, and she does a jump where she cuts off four dudes' heads. Yeah, yes, so cool. that, yeah. And it was like yeah. 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 that right there. And that's yeah. the moment. Yeah. That's the moment where yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Ahsoka solidified. That's it. She goes in my book. She's one of my favorite Star Wars characters. Period. Like, <laughs> yeah, before that, I was like, oh, she's great. She's yeah. cool. She's great. She's cool. And it was like legend. The <laughs> fact that I remember and I know what scene you're talking about it oh. speaks volumes yeah. because that's it was one of the more creative badass. Yeah kills or takedowns. Yeah. That would have been the sure. first time Bo-Katan appeared as well in the Clone yeah. Wars. Yeah. She yeah. was a little more of a terrorist then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Slight for me, terrorist. like that was such a cool moment, but there was like an episode, I'm going to be so bad remembering the episode names and characters, oh, I am fine. not you guys, but no, no. Uh, there's an episode where their ship lands and Ahsoka had to leave Anakin behind and she was walking with uh, a Twyla, I think. Yeah, Aayla Aayla Yeah, and mm -hmm. she um, she asked her, she's like, what's one life versus a thousand? And like trying to explain to her like the Jedi ways of like, you can't be attached to anything. And yeah. just seeing Ahsoka like go, I'm still gonna do things my way. She's so headstrong, yeah. and that's yeah. what I love about her. I think, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, do you remember yours? Because I think you told me. Or I remember watching <laughs> it with you and you liked it a lot. Which one was it? It was the one with the kids. Uh, when Ahsoka's, uh, she's taking all the, uh, all like, the, the, the gathering, yeah, all the Padawans, the gathering, oh, yeah. the gathering, and then they get into it with uh, Hondo and them. Yes. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. But I, honestly, always adored Ahsoka, yeah. and I think maybe it's because I didn't grow up with Star Wars, so yeah. like it wasn't that deep for me. You know what I mean? I understand. No, I, I totally get you. <laughs> so. Well, that's the that's the best thing about the Clone Wars because so many kids found Star Wars with that first mm -hmm. and didn't watch the movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a fantastic set of articles that came out about this guy just taking his kids to the Clone Wars, and then he showed them A New Hope, 
And when they hear that Darth Vader killed Anakin Skywalker, mm-hmm. their hero, they were, what? No, he can't be dead. <laughs> they watch episode five, uh, the shock yeah. that Vader is Anakin. Now, also yeah. with that, yeah. they only had up to like season five yeah, exactly. of Clone Wars yeah. at that time too. They didn't That's have Also cool. the kids just didn't know. The kids had yeah. no idea. They didn't, yeah. You don't have the lost episodes, you yeah. didn't have the final you know, stories uh-huh. that we, you guys yeah. just finished or That's anything. That's great. So. No matter what way you approach the chronology, <laughs> yeah. you will experience events differently. Exactly. Like, yeah. like you guys would have, awesome. I assume, seen Ahsoka in The Mandalorian first, yeah. right? We did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, right? Like we so at least would have gotten that feeling of like, hey, there's that I think we did Mando season one. One, and yeah. then Chris is like, we're doing the Star Wars movies. So okay. Runa hadn't yeah, seen yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen the original okay. trilogy either, weirdly enough. And so I we did four, five, six, one, two, three, Mando season two, and then we were like, we have to watch Clone Wars. I remember that was, but Bo- when did we see came. the Clone Wars movie? The, like, Before we the watched, Clone Wars animated when, movie. When we decided to watch Clone Wars, we did the movie first. So you guys okay. had saw Ahsoka and didn't know who she was. Yeah, because yeah, we, I we remember. All saw, yeah, Sarah yeah. was on the couch with us yes. from Mando. She was yeah. talking about like Rebels and Clone okay, Wars. Okay, and we were like, all right, Rosario Dawson's this badass character that everyone's talking yeah. about. Let's, People were like, let's you go don't see know. what the fuss is about. Like, I knew who Ahsoka was, but like only like contextually. You know we, I mean? we had the hype of Ahsoka already. Like I knew fans yeah. were hyped about this character, mm-hmm. so she didn't bother me as much when yeah. we started. And um, I, I can understand why it may have bothered some people. It's like Darth Maul being alive. It's like if you can't swallow oh, that pill, yeah. if you're like, I don't know, some people are really not gatekeepers. I don't know what, what word to describe it, but very protective of the canon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. So if you can't swallow that pill, then it might not be for you. But yeah. as soon as you do, the, it's great. The longer you're able to stick around, the more you're able to find those characters and figure out like how they're going to be and what they're going to be and yeah. fine tune it. And like they really figured out how to play Ahsoka, how to write her properly mm-hmm. against Anakin, and then how to give her her own adventures, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, that's the best thing about Clone Wars is it doesn't just do that for her, it does that for, like, Plo Kloon, <sighs> for Mace Windu, for all of these other, like, every time Kid Fisto showed up, we're like, Kid Fisto! Yeah. Whoa! Like, I don't know why, like, we see them, you know, in the movie, and then you can see them more and more on TV, and it's like, they're able to take each of these characters and give them more growth, mm-hmm. and then and take one that, if you didn't like Ahsoka in the beginning, it's totally understandable to, like, raising her to the ranks of being, like, she led so yeah. she when they showed her antics throughout the show she was commanding them right she was mm-hmm. a leader in her outright like with the among the ranks of the clone wars mm-hmm. but for me not until we watched the finale yesterday did i really appreciate the gravity of like that this child was so revered amongst these soldiers right? when yeah. they paint their helmets and they they salute her even though she's not there it's like that respect yeah. doesn't go away and like mm-hmm. she was a freaking badass yeah. man yeah. like she, she did a lot and i don't know why it took me till the finale to really realize how much of a leader she was uh, yeah. in the Clone Wars, you know? Especially yeah. when you go from the beginning when it's like, so technically, Rex, I outrank you, right? It's like, no. I think experience outranks everything. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's experience. <laughs> I am. Yeah. So, like, you go from there, and then yeah. you get the, to the end where it's like, you know, you don't have to call me commander anymore. Okay, commander. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, my gosh, you know? Like, he respects oh, her now. It's yeah. so good. And, and it's, always, it's always a trip for me to think about, like, Ahsoka is actually older than the clones. They're only sure. oh, ten, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. They have yeah. that experience, sure, but True. Yeah. She, technically she was older than them. Mm. That's now, wild. Go, going off of what Chris had asked, yeah. um, I did want to ask you guys because you were talking about like Plo Koon and Kefist and all these things. Um, had having watched the movies and stuff first, and even if you guys want to talk about early Clone Wars, through all of Clone Wars, were there characters that you grew to love or hate? more because of the stories we got through Clone Wars where it's like maybe maybe Plo Koon where it's like some random council member I don't really know who he is but you're like man now he's so cool oh, and I yeah. love Plo this Kloon, character yeah. Yeah. Plo Koon I don't like, know how he's hella dope well, and Plo Koon was like in space trying to like save the other yeah, clones right? that was when no I was no one cares like, about us in general yeah, yeah. <laughs> not to yeah. me yeah <laughs> that, that was the yeah. most badass moment for Plo Koon for yeah. sure yeah. for me it's like Honestly, it's the clones, you guys. Because like before, yeah. before even watching clone, like for me going into Star Wars initially, the mm-hmm. clones were always just bad people to me. I never knew anything for uh, about them. Yeah. And Clone Wars the show humanized them for me. You got yeah. to see them grow up. The you got to see them like be there for each other, brotherhood, respect. Yeah. Like you got to see the training, everything. So like. I was like, oh my god, clones, we hate them. But no, I love them, and I want justice for the clones. I really like Cad Bane. I think yeah. he was so cool. Yeah. Seeing him in Boba yeah. Fett, right, right when it was matching where we were in Clone Wars, was like, oh my yeah. god. And the voice, man. <laughs> yeah. He's such an iconic yeah. voice. Uh, the, but the clones, yeah, I would agree. That was, every time the show focused on the clones, I'm like, that was the best episode we've had so far. Yeah. Uh, wow. Not to say the other stuff was weak, but 
it was just the stuff that I didn't know that I wanted, yeah. you yeah. know, out of that. And it's called The Clone Wars. It's their show, too. I think some of the thing that did surprise me and a character who sticks out in my memory in the show for whatever it is, is Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> just because you start to see Anakin hang out yeah. with him more and more. And I guess the idea that all of the structures that are built up to make the Empire are already there, right? And they're just waiting for the order to be turned, right? Yeah. So, like, in my mind, you watch the old one and Grand Moff Tarkin... Mm. And correct me if I'm wrong, he's old boy, he's like, yeah, blow up Alderaan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And, like, in your mind, you're like, oh, this dude's evil and has been evil and, I don't know, I guess the Empire hired him to be evil. But, like, no, here he is in the Clone Wars. Here he is with the Republic. Here he is right here in the background being a bit of a dick, but, like, not being fully evil. And he's just, he's just already here. The system is already built up for it to be as bad as it wants to be. It just needs to right push in that direction. Yeah. And every time you see Anakin talking with him, it's always kind of a... They are able to build the dread into those scenes where it's just like, yeah. damn, Anakin's talking with that dude now. He's going to go destroy this planet in the future. And it's kind of wild. Like, every time you get a bit of the slip of, like, well, Anakin's going bad. Yeah. And just seeing him hanging out with him, you're like, that dude's going to get a high position <laughs> in the Empire. He's yeah. going to blow up Alderaan. And here he is. It's like old photograph pictures when you see, like, Mussolini Look hanging out with, like, Stalin or something. No, it's not a real thing. But you know what I mean? Like, mm. you're just like, damn, they're going to do stuff. They don't yeah. even know it yet. But they are. I think that's my one of my favorite aspects of your guys' reaction specifically was almost the contradiction of how you enjoy Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> I love because him. Because <laughs> Anakin Skywalker deserves to be judged for the choices that he made. But because you know where he's going to go and they throw in just the subtlest Imperial March. Yeah. I can see, I see you like, yes. But that's not, you don't want him to do it. I don't, but he's going to already. But he's going to. But the hallway scene has to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I like to throw an honorable mention to Jar Jar. I grew to love him a lot. Um, I don't know, but like yes. when I saw him with Queenie, Queenie Jeannie. Queenie, yeah. Yeah, and what? I don't know what they did together. Oh, cool. Yoga. I don't know. <laughs> that, that man yeah. or that Jar Jar has stuff that we'll never know, secrets, oh, yeah. and we'll never know up his sleeves. And I love oh, that. I, I really that game you didn't even know about. No, <laughs> yeah, I love Jar Jar, man. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I think that one character that definitely grew on me over the course of Clone Wars was Padme. Yeah. Padme. Because oh, movies, yeah. Padme was not my favorite yeah. at all. She had at a lot all. to do and it wasn't anything people were interested in. It was yes, politics, yes. So it was, and so yeah. I really liked her in Clone Wars where she was like really like taking charge and yeah. like having her own yeah. agency and you know even like the the relationship that she had with Anakin was really like well portrayed. Yeah. Whereas in the movies it was just really weird. Yeah. Cuz like you know? no, sure. I totally agree with Mark cuz like in the movie she was just the mother who gave birth to his children. That's and it. Died. That's all we knew. Yeah, of and a died. Broken heart. Literally. But like in the in Clone Wars, she's fighting for the people. There's a war going on. She's a Clovis. She's a, Clovis. Oh, she's Clovis. amazing. So I, I agree with Marquetta. Probably the writing, because her. I feel like her speeches to the Senate in Clone Wars were all so like, wow, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if it was as strong in the in the prequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. I do know that there was a deleted scene in Episode Three. Yeah. Where she is holding a council of like the two thousand delegates, so the dele or delegation of two thousand, yeah, the yeah. We want to explain that Mothma shows up in that, Mothma. yeah. It it's was to uh, oppose Palpatine, right? Because yeah. like, hey, reinstate the Senate back to the way it was because you sure. have too much power. So mm -hmm. I feel like that was an important. I feel like they shouldn't have cut that scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dang. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Justice for Padme too. Yeah, yeah, but she was really well done in this. The, the clone. It, it began to be hard to watch the clones die. Yes. Yeah. Like so brutally sometimes. I'm like. Oh, we don't even care. He just died. But you know, now they we, do care. We had a, a voice actor for every clone, D. Bradley Baker, who mm -hmm. we know yeah. has worked through Avatar: The Last Airbender, yeah. and this guy's had one of the greatest voice acting careers of all time. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I, I, how do you guys feel about the individuality of the clones? Like, obviously, they they paint their you know their you know the mm -hmm. tattoos and their hair and their armor, I love that. but like personally, when I hear Rex, I can just. I can tell it's Rex yeah. oh, compared to yeah. anybody else. If you did, I think if, it's it would be interesting to do like, uh, if you had like Commander Cody, Rex, yeah. and then maybe like some of the guys from Domino Squad yeah. fives. If you just kind of like blind taste test, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're you're talking, talking. Yeah. I think you can. And it speaks to D Valley Breaker, who I assume hopefully isn't crazy, <laughs> but like, he's yeah. like, I have figured out yeah. how to sound individually like he's, myself, but also 
a hundred other people. And then just talk to myself. (laughs) I I, I commendment for it. I don't understand how he's threading that needle, but yeah, like Rex sounds like Rex. Cody sounds like Cody. mm -hmm. Rex has that slight authority to his voice. It's such a subtle tonal change Mm -hmm. that if you can do between characters, that's that's just incredible. Now, D had, he did kind of reveal a little bit of his process, not too much, but he would say that every time a new clone would pop up or a clone would learn something, he would write one new adjective next to that clone's name. Mm-hmm. So it always yeah. felt like he was slightly changing them a little bit. Nice. Like that. That was just cool. such a cool, I mean, Very I've clever. always been fascinated with the process of voice acting. And same, that. same here. Soon, maybe not as soon as some other people want, but soon you'll be able to see that more in Star Wars The Bad so, Match. Yeah, yeah. D, D. Bradley Baker actually has a website for aspiring voice actors yeah. too. And mm-hmm. a lot of like very good material there and sure. how to break into the industry, how yeah. you would want to practice. Between and, him and Steve Bloom, yeah. I'm gonna buy both courses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Absolutely. does he voice the Bad Batch characters as well? He voices all Bad Batch as well, yeah. Oh but they feel, God, they feel so crazy. unique, right? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, they're all so unique. They One's are. like... Rambo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when we had the Jeopardy question yesterday, like which actor has vo- played over 2,000 yeah. characters, That's what I, I was, was actually going to say D. Bradley Baker, but Tamara Morrison, I guess yeah. they're both... They both get that credit, I guess. Sure, they do. Yeah. When you're in the movies versus that. Yeah. I mean, you could also maybe say... The battle droids all being yeah. voiced by. Oh. Uh, Roger, Roger. Roger. Uh-oh. Yeah, Roger, Roger. there's so many of them. Like they're See, all voiced by. Uh, you gotta just be a robot. Like, I'm gonna record each line once, and you will use the same lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the way of George Lucas making sure he gets that PG is like, well, no one cares if you destroy robots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So oh, having those droids, yeah, I mean, you can just brutalize them. Yeah. Grievous oh, yeah. would, would walk in a room and kill two droids <laughs> off tops <laughs> for no <laughs> reason. For fun. I, for I, no I, reason. Oh I said to you guys before, but my, one of my favorite battle droid mo- moments is Asajj Ventress like talking to droids, like they got away, and he just throws her, throws him off a cliff, yeah. and the battle droids are like, why? Yeah. <laughs> I just love it so much. Yes. I gotta watch that because I know we laugh our ass we off when that happens. Can I take a brief moment to ask you a Star Wars question? Absolutely. Uh, so General Grievous loses. I'm going to just say off the tops of my head, 15 fleets in this show. Yeah. Where, where, where did they get? Are they just hollowing out planets behind the scenes? Because yes. I think we see a little bit of it in Andor, where yeah. the, the one where all the and the, the Andorian kids, mm-hmm. where all the one where all the kids <laughs> are all uh, being the like, hey, they're Canary. over there. Yeah, yeah, the Canary. They're over there mining our planet to mm-hmm. death. Like they have to just be strip mining whole entire systems mm-hmm. yep. because my guy can roll up and lose. Ten trillion dollars worth of materials, and be like, I'll be back next month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we've seen he the got the banks. We've yeah. seen the banks and stuff, but we also got to remember Count Dooku as Count of Sereno is one of the richest Ooh. people yeah. in the galaxy, mm-hmm. which yeah. is a very, very large place. He's a and count. Being a Jedi mm-hmm. that inherits that gets a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He can bankroll. Yeah, bankroll yeah. He seems just... like British sophistication. You know, he reeks of Christopher like, Lee. Christopher oh, Lee. Yeah, I think of yeah. Christopher Lee, so that's kind of yeah. perfect. I wanted to just. I don't know if we're jumping around too much. Oh, I, I bring jump it to everywhere. Anakin again because <laughs> when you asked who our favorite characters were, I was yeah. thinking more side characters. But mm-hmm. I have to say, I love Anakin in this so much. Like it provides so much context yeah. for Hayden Christensen's roles. When we were watching yesterday, I think Mickey was like, "But well, isn't that too quick now? Like he just flips now." Mm-hmm. But he's giving if you, you enough. You rewatch Episode Three. Mm-hmm. The whole speech happens where it's like, "Oh, we don't." grant you the rank of Jedi, but yeah, you're still going to be spying on the Chancellor who asked you to be his aide. Mm-hmm. And so all of that disillusionment makes sense with all of this build up here. Yeah. And uh, he I don't also know, has you the way more of the good people under his belt still from episode yes. two, which like, yeah. I mean, he's already proven that he'll do wanton murder. So like, it's hard. I, the turn is hard, but he, like, he's had it in him. I think he's out of balance. Yeah. When he can balance those things, he's Gucci. But then, like, episode three is just like, we're just going to we're gonna tip the scales, literally. We're just going to yeah. push you all the way over. And, like, I don't know. I think you can already see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just appreciate what they did for him and Padme. Like, their romance was, yeah. everything was yeah. just heightened. Sure. I, th- I think the most important thing when you're thinking about Anakin and the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker is that you have to remember, you had to, I kind of, I had to put the blame on the Jedi. Yeah. Because Anakin the chosen one, a virgin in the Force, literally has no father. The Force is his father, right? Is born to a slave woman that loves him unconditionally, and he gets, you know, nine, ten years old. Jedi don't do that. They give up love for just general compassion. They don't get the chance to 
go and strive and and covet because that that's that, that connection is so dangerous because what mm. would you do for the person you love but i would do terrible things yes. for my so wife a lot of those oh, yeah. younglings you know? they were taken as babies or very at a very young mm -hmm. age very to be initiated young. and whistle. anakin yeah. He, it's like the Sasuke thing. Yeah. Yeah. What do you know about it? Like you've seen this part yeah. where he's like, I had something yeah. and I lost yeah, it. And he, lost yeah, it. I mean. and so he, he knew too. of love and then lost it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's why Anakin grows up knowing to love, knowing to care about people. And the Jedi, they one don't even want to take him, but two they try to take that away from him, and he just strives for it. That's why he connects Sasuke. to Padme yeah. so sure. hard. You know, love and is I'm, such an interesting thing in, yeah. in the in Star Wars in general for it me is. because. You see Anakin, literally the chosen one. You, um, you know, one has to be the balance between like the mm -hmm. evil and good force for that son and daughter that we met in Clone Wars or Clone whatever. Wars. Oh, we yeah. need to talk about yeah. that too. But yeah. like, um, but then like, he also could have like saved everything if yeah. he didn't love Padme technically, because he's like, I love you, blah mm -hmm. blah blah. Like it was such a big deal loving Padme for him. Yeah. And you see like even like again love in Star Wars. Obi Wan Kenobi with Satine, uh, Satine, Duchess Satine. Duchess Satine. Yeah, yeah, Satine. He's like, I'll give up the Jedi ways for you. If like, he had just said the word. If he just left. said the word, yeah. literally, that was, that was such yeah. a good life. like. Love is there in the Jedi world, but like it's just so sad that like they have to turn yeah. it off so hard. Yeah, and I, think, and I see how it affects it. Like you're, love is the death but of they're not soldiers either. They're peacemakers. They're yeah. supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. But and that's what it feels like. They're being made soldiers by not like having love. Mm -hmm. In that too, like you're kind of hitting it with Obi Wan. He says he would have given up the Jedi Order had Satine said, you know, I want to be with you. Mm. Anakin's trying to get both ways, right? Yeah, He's he trying is. to be with Padme yeah. and stay a Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, you should have one or the well, other. The way the Jedi should be are peacekeepers and doing this stuff and exactly. not having so attachments much. to one thing or another, but for everybody. And it's kind of like what you're talking about with Ayla and like, well, sure, we can save Anakin, but what's one life versus thousands of lives? Yeah. So much of Anakin's love is about he was a slave. He has. No, he doesn't own anything, right? Mm -hmm. What he owns is his love. Is his. He possesses that love. So, trying to take that from him or to say it's not is very important. Like that's all he had. Yeah. yeah. So. It's, and I mean uh, the Jedi. I'm just saying, y'all. He could have got a couple extra dollars. And bought his mama too. Could have bought her freedom. I know y'all got the money yep, for it. Sure. See where you live at. Ah, Lux Bonteri. Lux Bonteri. Lux Bonteri. That's yeah. I was like. <laughs> It was in the back of my mind. Yeah. Like, what was that kid's freaking name? Yeah. The Levin. Just oh, I was like, what was that? That's that's my mind works Bonteri. weirdly. Um, yeah, I want to talk about Mortis a little bit. Could we, like... 100%. Yeah. Mortis was and I should I'm say sorry, too, I'm sorry I brought that up. So much of the Clone Wars, and I think people that got into Clone Wars later don't understand this. Like, George Lucas was there for every story meeting yeah. in the Clone Wars. So, when you see something like Morris, you're like, what are they doing? Lucas never would have... Th that's all from That's him. his idea. That, to the point oh, where Dave Filoni... Seems like the most Lucas yeah, thing. Dave Filoni's like, we can't do this. This is ridiculous. No, we're doing it. <laughs> we're going to take a break from yeah. the war to go to the magic space rock where you are going to decide the best thing. I want to meet George. Son. Yeah. No, He'll be like, let's do, the, let's do this Mortis story thing. Yeah. Let's also throw in a Godzilla monster. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. He's like, yeah. he, he made a Godzilla Godzilla movie story. You know? He would straight up do, all right, we're going to do Seven Samurai that did that Bounty Hunter episode. The Hut Cartel is like the Godfather. Father, there's, there's literally a Godfather Hut. Yeah. 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 Oh, that little baby. What was his name? Rada. Rada. Yeah. Rada. Rada the Hut. Also, R.I.P. Zero. Stinky. Oh. Stinky. Stinky. Zero the Hut. Oh, Zero the Bro, he got done in by his girl. All the slipping, bro. Yep. Oh. Yeah. That's one of the worst ones for me. I don't know why. I know. <laughs> that was that was rough. Right. Was rough. So she's not gonna pop him. Yeah. Just like yeah. Got you. No, but yeah, going in. To the cantina to sing. <laughs> <laughs> to Mortis and the amnesia that you get from Mortis. I immediately, I, I know I make lost references, but I immediately got lost vibes because I felt like it pulled them to their yes. just in a loose sure. way, not okay. not that anything to do with like being on an island, but it yeah. was a place that they were pulled to. It was their destiny. They kind of forgot how they ended up there. Yeah. I think. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you only stumble upon it if it calls to you. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's in no known physical location in the galaxy. There's, in terms of like trying to define it, there's no real answers. I don't know if they stumbled upon it or if it came to them too. Because yeah, like yeah. they weren't going for that. They were going yeah. up to meet up with like well, Rex and the rest of the fleet They did stuff, say right? that they had gotten an ancient Jedi distress signal. Sure. Uh, from Mortis. And that's playing what for they 16 found years. That sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I will, that we got into it a lot, uh, like argument wise, but also like mm -hmm. in the comments on that episode. Yeah. Because for me, I see... I see them being like, Anakin, you've got two choices. And those choices are, you can stay here and be a martyr for the cause yeah. and keep balance with everything forever. Yeah. Space Jesus. Or <laughs> you can go on and off and do your thing 
and be space Satan. Right. And <laughs> I I know it's an unfair thing to ask, but also what he's going to go on and do mm-hmm. as well as an unfair thing to ask. We've got hindsight he didn't in the moment. Yeah. And knowing the road that he's about to take, knowing the things that are about to unfold and knowing all the damage he's going to do, mm-hmm. not only to like the world, but to himself internally. I mean, he's yeah. a whole half a robot with a very sad, broken heart who isn't better until finally at the end he kills his boss. But... Well, his does. his son asked for help. And yeah, he, he actually, you know, like, that's my favorite thing about <laughs> Return of the Jedi is a Jedi. Luke isn't a Jedi that defeats the Sith. He's a son that asks his father for help. <laughs> that I need help. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, oh, I, I just think that, in, in my opinion, that like he doesn't know it, but he, I mean, he should have stayed. He, he would have yeah. been a martyr. He would have been like yeah. a hero. Hero. It would have been unfair to ask, but that would be like the burdens on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. But. I don't remember this one part though. Like when he sh- was shown the visions of what yeah. he would do, the, the heinous stuff that he would do, do and terrible that, things. The Darth Vader like thing like you were and like Padme God, dying, you see Padme dying in the vision, everything. Did he get? Did he say he was he would stay or did he get amnesia immediately? Like forgetful. The father takes that from him. Yeah. yeah. Those, those memories because the father knows what he's gonna. There are things that he has to do, and if he keeps this knowledge he'll never do them exactly yeah, so like, like he never got the option remember yeah. the vader yeah. mask and yeah yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, Padme, the all of it i remember all of it, it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, he was never given a chance man yeah. it would be tricky to try to like if if you just were given visions like here's the things you're gonna do and you're like i'm gonna do those like what would you do you know yeah. like I mean, the us knowing real. what's coming yeah. it, it's yeah. different than like yeah. okay i have to assume i am doing these things or th- this is a lie you know what am i being told and what is the truth it's a fun episode. I do. Art, I like but. what it does for Anakin's character, like as we get that glimpse and that deep foreshadowing. But yeah. I also just like the lore reveal of that there is a father, a mm-hmm. son, and a daughter, Good. and um, a trinity. If that you will. The, the that is how the balance is kept. And then you can have all kinds of theories on wh- who the mother is. Then, like, what is the mother? Right, the force. Sure. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, could be the, the force, force itself. itself. Yeah. But I just appreciated the show for going there. Yeah. And like bringing up those questions that you thought like well we're never gonna know that mm-hmm. but like oh shit. twist it was mother palsin all along yeah. <laughs> there's a mother there's certainly theories about that yeah. really yeah. 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 oh my oh, god, god. <laughs> I, I loved your guys' experience with Dathomir especially those of you that oh, played oh yeah that yeah. fallen order oh Spidey <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess oh, I need to play Spidey <laughs> just like yeah, yeah. Dathomir being on Dathomir is crazy because one Dathomir it's a fun place to be mm-hmm. and two it feels like one of those places that's cursed like, I want to know if anybody came off of Death and Mary and they're like, I make music. I am an artist. <laughs> I draw beautiful, happy trees. Yeah. But instead, it's like, we got Savage Press and, like, Asajj Ventress, the Night Sisters. Like, that whole planet feels like something I love that there. planet. I want to yeah. be on that planet. I want to be with my witch sisters. <laughs> and it's so great to see other Force traditions out there, right? Yeah. One of my favorite lines in The Last Jedi is Luke talking about how the light side of the Force doesn't belong to the Jedi. The Force doesn't belong to the Jedi. That's vanity to think that. And we see stuff like the Night Sisters, we see Queenie, you know, yeah, the the Dottons. being able to have the traditions that utilize the Force in ways that aren't Jedi, yeah. aren't Sith. Mm-hmm. Kind of relatable uh, to the real world in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even in Mortis, we had these uh, like seasons changing very, yeah. very quickly during mm-hmm. every day, right? Yeah. 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 There's this idea of time dilation, yes. right? Yeah. Rex says that you guys never left when they went to Mortis. Yeah. yeah. And there's always been this kind of weird thing in Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back has kind of like a weird timeline anyway, in terms mm-hmm. of like, how long has this, this movie gone on? Luke, how long was he with Yoda? A lot of people would say, I don't know, two weeks, three yeah. months, we don't know. Yeah. And then Mortis kind of yeah. introduces this thing of high force concentration can kind of mess mm-hmm. yeah. with time. And there was a recent, very recent article, John Favreau talking about Grogu with with Luke and how yeah. much time really passed. Oh my god! And that doesn't nice. necessarily mean time, yeah, outside for everybody, an Earth year. It can yeah. be kind of different because of where you are with the. Film. Especially with so what you're sorry with what you're saying about how Yoda and Luke possibly could have spent way more time way together. Longer. It only makes sense because that scene was a mirror image of, uh, you know, Luke teaching Grogu yeah. was a mirror image of that, so yeah. they could have gone yeah. through the same time dilation. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, in the real world, like, if a planet's big enough and has enough gravity, it will The theory of general relativity, yeah. So, like, it's already, like, if you spend time at a higher concept, like, around the black hole, where there's more gravity mm-hmm. there, like, you will literally time dilate. So, I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. it's not even a, it doesn't even have to be a theory, you just like, yeah, yeah. it was close to some astronomical thing or like there's enough force energy here that's yeah. literally yeah. slowing down time for them. No, Science teller. I, I find that I, I, that's fascinating to me. I've been recently reading this book called The Elegant Universe talking about mm. astrophysics and just trying to make it a little better for us to understand. Yeah. One of my, the craziest thing is 
like we can't really tell the difference because we're so close together and the frame of reference just seems to be correct but yeah. technically time is passing slightly different for you mm -hmm. than it is for me just being this far away from each other mm -hmm. so if we had the most accurate measurements in the world mm -hmm. we can't measure this much but if we did our math wouldn't work out and I found that really fascinating. And I mean, it, I it's like essentially that. the magic that's in our universe yeah. that can easily be applied to that. Remind me to tell you about the atomic clocks in the airplanes later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm fascinated. I will tell you after I love this. that type of stuff. <laughs> it's just like how like that color red, I'm seeing a different red than yeah. anyone else is seeing. Yeah. Like you are seeing, a, you know that's red, but my red is not your red. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, uh, that's one of the things I love about Star Wars, too, just because it's so important to me and, you know, I've been with it my entire life my brother introduced it to me nice. uh you know i kind of do this thing where i try to explain the unknown with what i know and what i know is star wars so <laughs> having these conversations <laughs> where we can talk yeah. about the theory of general relativity <laughs> when it no, comes to that. magical mortis yeah. <laughs> right? really like cool. you're reading the astrophysicist book i bet that helps with your expanse watch the yeah, right absolutely. because the showrunner there he i love the expanse that, that's what he did i love the expanse almost equally Separate but equal in terms of what's very, very I different. Like the <laughs> the actual space battles in Expanse yeah. is as if as yeah. if it were actually happening. Yeah. So much thought and intelligence is put into okay, what if in our real life mm -hmm. we could do this? What yeah. would it look like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do appreciate how that looks, and I appreciate how Star Wars looks, where it's like just lasers and, yeah. and all those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why it's shots. It's not a sci-fi. It's a fantasy. Mm -hmm. thing, yeah, thing, yeah. Right? I mean, with the different races, the different factions, yeah. all of that, all of the things that go into making fantasy fantasy, it definitely mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And also just. Like uh, the idea that the look of Star Wars is that it's all kit bashed and it's a universe that's like mm -hmm. lived in and everything's dirty and grimy and there's no two things that look alike and uh, I don't know. that that thing is also why it lends really well to Legos too. But like yeah. that's why I don't know Star Wars. Good mm -hmm. good, good, good look. Yeah. Good look over you. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't bring him up. I know we talked about him a lot in the discussion, but Darth Maul. I love right? him. Yeah. He. Obviously, none of us yeah. said he was one of our favorites, but I feel like he's that's a cheat code. He's already he's like one of the A1 best. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just assume. So were any of you guys, because you guys all watched the movies first, were you like, why is Darth Maul back? Or were you like, yes, Darth Maul I was back. like, yeah. I had heard that he was coming back, and I was very excited because I thought his character design was so cool. Duel yeah. of Fates is so fun. Mm -hmm. That whole lightsaber fight, we didn't really mm -hmm. learn much about him. And Aside for such sick. a unique <laughs> design, like I feel like they they could have had him around yeah. more, give him more context. So yeah. I was I, really happy. When pre normies, I was looking up which um, which arcs to watch, and one of them was like the Darth Maul arc. And I was like, oh, man, he did. How <laughs> and it was like, and like the dude's just giving over brief. He's like, Obi Wan has unfinished business with Darth Maul. And I was like, okay, well. In my mind, I'm like, it's Star Wars. Like, people get their limbs chopped off left and right. <laughs> like, it's it's kind of a meme. It's such a meme that now in <laughs> Avengers people or uh, in Marvel people lose hands yeah. and stuff like that. It's like, oh, it's a no match to Star Wars at this yeah. point. <laughs> but I was like, well, however he's back, I don't care. Oh, yeah. I'm interested in seeing it. Plus, like, I always liked Obi-Wan, and I think that uh, Clone Wars... Obi-Wan's already an A-tier, S-tier character, mm -hmm. and Clone Wars does a ton to build him up even higher. His frustration, like his relationship with Duchess Etienne, the way he interacts with Anakin, like... His snark. The yeah. way that he can defend himself with snark. Yes. yes. His, his I'm above all of this mess yeah. energy, like, they're able to do that a bunch for him, and I was like, well, I kind of like Obi-Wan as mm -hmm. it is, and I think I, by then I had maybe seen... I was watching Clone Wars in order, and I hadn't got through the first season yet, but yeah. I'd seen enough to be like, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying this, I'm enjoying this portrayal of Obi-Wan. I definitely want to see him get into it with Darth Maul, and mm -hmm. it was crazy. So. Darth Maul is just so cool. Like I've always liked him, and I like that he came back, but then we, the finale of Clone Wars, seeing how he tried to figure out who Ahsoka was and try to get to her to stop everything. He even, wanted to stop Palpatine. He wanted to stop yeah. it, man. That made him even cooler to me. Like, just Pal seeing that Pal finale. Replace him, I still Palpatine like, hurt him just as much as he hurt Even if he else. replaced yeah. him, though, like, yeah. there, it's a, it was a better chance for us. The devil, the devil you know. Yeah. <laughs> and through stories like we got with Savage Repress, we learned, like, yeah. the kind of the tragedy of Maul. He was uh -huh. just a kid taken from the Knight Brother clan, mm -hmm. yeah. sold yeah. by this, this matriarchal yeah. <laughs> And finding society. him later, like, losing his yeah. mind. Was, yeah, ooh. I mean, yeah. just like the clones, he never had a choice. Yeah. Ventress is yeah. still like out yeah, bro, and about. Yeah. Yeah. Give me yeah. a Ventress TV show. I watch it. She's living so, the best life. Yeah. She was good too. One of my sure. regrets about the Clone Wars is that there was, you know, there was at least two or three more seasons planned before it was mm -hmm. canceled the first time. Um, and there's some great supplemental material out there that adapted a lot of the Clone Wars arcs. Sure. I would personally recommend you've been checking out some of the Star Wars yeah. books. I would check uh, recommend a book called Dark Disciple. Okay. It stars Quinlan Vos and Asaz Ventress. Ooh. It's a fantastic book. It was going to be a Clone, Clone Wars, Wars arc. arc. 
um, but it was adapted, and I would recommend that if for, you the, read for the book club. Anyway. There's also, love it. Uh, okay. I believe it's Son of Dathomir that kind of takes place from... Oh, my God. From, Is that the comic? It's, it's a comic, comic series. Yeah. It takes place from where we see uh, Palpatine, yeah. you know, capture Darth Maul mm-hmm. to where we see him again. That's yeah. so sad. Because in, in the final arc, he talks about how, like, the Mandalorian saved me yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're like, what are you talking about? I wanted to, the like, son did of I forget? Yeah, the <laughs> son of forget this so comic cool. series yeah. was meant to be in Clone Wars before it got canceled. They turned into a comic mm-hmm. series and it kind of fills in that gap a little yeah. bit, too. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's also in that time out. we kind of lose track of the Darksaber as well. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 that was a wonder. Like, it doesn't come into play here at the end. Yeah. But the next time we see... Who will it at last? So the last time we saw it, Maul was fighting Palpatine with it, yeah, uh, in the yeah. lawless. My God, one of so my favorite. Good. That fight is great, bro. When he drops them both, yeah. Up. When you see the, like the, the, the mural on the back too, that, of the Jedi and the Mandalore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that uh, that fight is awesome for me because. I, I enjoy watching Palpatine so much that I don't really think about like Same. this. How terrifying! <laughs> <Same. laughs> yeah. That's like, yeah. He came. He's like, I gotta Marketta. do this myself. Like, we well, know honestly. this. I if, love he, him. if he wants to, he can go handle these things himself. But that's not how he's going to turn mm-hmm. the hearts and minds of the galaxy. Mm-hmm. But when he needs to, mm-hmm. he comes in. He takes everybody out. He kills Savage. He has so much fun. Yeah, that's the thing that really I think sells that character. Like, if there is a devil in Star Wars, it's someone like Palpatine. For sure. The culmination of a thousand years of Sith revenge and planning, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but yeah, that fight. Just watching the animation. Obviously, I think the animation of the Darth Maul Ahsoka fight mm-hmm. is the peak of of Clone Wars. But that yeah. one, Palpatine's a tornado. Yeah. yeah. You know what? It, it shows me that in Star Wars, when you want to show that a character has great power, uh, when they're bad guys, they they walk. <laughs> To whatever the issue is, oh, like when Palpatine's like, oh, that feels weird. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be back, and he's just like, mm, he's like, yeah. you know what I mean, he's not in a rush. No. He gets there, takes his time, yeah. probably gets coffee on the way, walks down. He's just like, hey, when are you back alive? What are you doing? And he's like, oh man, I didn't know. He's like, what? and just like you see all of Vader when Vader's like, I'm gonna get there and I'm going to get there slowly. Or yeah. even when Anakin in the last in the last arc that we watched, when he's walking up, he's like, hey, "I'm just gonna walk up and handle this." It's yeah. like I know, that was crazy. when the bad guys walk up, when they yeah. like when Darth Maul is just like walking around the whole time. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, they don't, they can be fast. That they don't want to be fast. Is there an in-universe way to explain then why like Sidious wouldn't put up more of a fight in Episode Six? You know, when Vader in episode tosses oh. him. Oh well, I mean, I, I the think old. the the real explanation is just that he doesn't even consider Vader mm-hmm. or Anakin. Anakin yeah, doesn't Vader. exist anymore. He yeah. has stomped out Anakin. He is just about creating pain for Luke Skywalker at that moment because he really mm-hmm. does want to take. Vader's kind of damaged yeah. goods, right? When you when he's Vader not as got, strong as he could have been. Yeah, when he got thrown in the lava and chopped off, like uh, you know, I know midichlorians is one of those things people don't really understand slash don't really like, but. He is less powerful because of that. That's why he has to use the dark side to make up for it. Mm. Palpatine wants Luke because Luke has the potential to be something way more than Vader does. Yeah. Mm. And we do learn in the sequel trilogy that Palpatine, so, and, and, and we do also <laughs> learn this in the Mando and some other things. Like Palpatine's obsessed with living forever. Yeah. Right? yeah. So am I. Well, he's yeah. how old is he? Because when we first come up with him, mm-hmm. how old is he? Over a hundred years old, I believe. Jeez. So and and. God, I don't want to say this out loud. Say it. I don't want to. Are you going to spoil? No, then say I'm it. not. It's just... Is it about Darth Plagueis the Wise? No, this conversation, I guess it... Like, if Sidious it's just died from wanna. being thrown down a hole, mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of anticlimactic. I mean, he doesn't get anything better. But in, that's why he in, comes in back. Nine. But so, yeah, yeah. I want, That's the thing yeah. I wanted but to make sure. It also are. blows <laughs> up. He also <laughs> yeah, he gets thrown down a hole and blows up, which is like, okay, I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. But also, my guy was hundreds of years old already. I don't know. He's super powerful. It's it's silly, but I could see how the writers would be like, well, technically. <laughs> so well, there's, the, there's the, the, the through line on. makes sense for me. I don't like the execution. I, I definitely understand. I, I like to if we're going to try to explain one thing. What's the mirror of it? The Jedi are the mirror of of the Sith, of course. Yep. Obi Obi Wan Kenobi, I feel like goes a little overboard with this. The the te- television show, not the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like when a character fueled by the dark side wants to cling on to life, they can. Whereas the Jedi, to become one with the Force, have to give it up to the point where they don't even have a body anymore, mm-hmm. right? But Palpatine's obsessed with living. The Jedi are obsessed with balance of the Force. They're two completely different things. Yeah. So I think it makes a lot of sense thematically that Palpatine will do whatever he can 
to continue to live because he is the ultimate selfish character. Yeah. Yeah. He is not concerned. We've seen him go through Maul and Dooku and Vader. Yeah. He does not. He's not going to pass the torch. Mm -hmm. He's the culmination. He is the torch. He is going to live for a thousand years mm -hmm. as Emperor of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in Episode Nine, yeah, we do have kind of like that. You know, it's the classic meme, right? Like somehow yeah. he yeah. returned, even mm -hmm. though we do have uh, Dominic Monaghan's character yes. right after that say like cloning, Sith sorcery, like all those things. People don't yeah. care about that. They're like, yeah. how? Somehow you returned. Yeah. I see, that's what yeah. I think if they would have been like Palpatine, did, I don't know. It's yeah. the execution about it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, it, it, plus the way he comes back, the way he looks at the end is very uh, mechanical, very like, Dracula. it feels he's like just, he's, he's like a puppet. Yeah, like yeah. he's hooked up to like every life-giving machine that he can have. Mm -hmm. I mean, they fumbled a lot of the balls there, mm -hmm. but they do, if you, if you want to suspend your disbelief, it's literally all there. I mean, yeah. Yoda's 900 years old, bro. Like, it's yeah. all there. My uh, concern was, I think I was texting you during this, mm -hmm. was um, how does then the prophecy still hold true that Anakin would bring balance to the Force if Palpatine lived? Is there a way to kind of the way think, I think about, about it, it differently? It. Yeah. I, I actually like that there's no concrete answer to this. I've always said, like, if you try to say, I know what the balance of the Force means, I think that you're actually further away from the answer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But the way I like to think about it is that Anakin, in his redemption, it's not really about defeating the Sith. It's about <clears throat> finally... Anakin reaching out from the depths of Vader and embracing someone that he loves because the Jedi denied him from that someone that Mace was, Windu denied yeah. him that and that's what he needed and that's what the galaxy needed I think someone I also, that was able to come back from yeah. that those dark depths in and yeah. of itself is just the victory the balance of the force that yeah. you need to see goes train Luke. I think there's some elements there too you guys have seen uh, some some elements of Tales of the Jedi mm -hmm. right for, with for uh, with Count Dooku, right? Yes. You're, yeah. you're seeing yeah. like these Jedi are coming to help these senators at some points, and like the senators are not really being the best of people, and they're they're causing problems for their their planet and stuff like that too. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the stuff, uh, Marquetta, you've been reading some High Republic stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like those Jedi there are a little different compared to the ones we have in the movies? Yeah. Because. Uh, yeah, I'll, let me hear what your thoughts are, and yeah. then I'll, I'll continue with some of my thoughts on it. I mean, the, it's called the High Republic, where it's supposed to be like the, like the Renaissance era of yeah. the universe, and the Jedi especially are thriving, mm -hmm. and they're, um, like in their prime. They've, I feel like the, when the High Republic was happening, it was just like around when they were also learning how the, um, the space lanes work. Yeah, yeah. the hyperspace lanes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was a lot of um, discovery happening, and just like just like a lot of growth for mm -hmm. everyone. I feel like at that point, there were some Jedi like um, Avar, Chris, yeah. mm -hmm. that were just like very, very powerful, especially in like being able to bring other Jedi together to use the Force together yeah. for something like huge, like use the Force together to like flip a ship around or like move a planet of course or something like yeah. insane yeah i don't know that they had such strong connection in the movies yeah i don't think that the jedi were as much like on the same page or like all together on the having same the same other. yeah like having like believing in the same like having they, the they same weren't at their system. peak yeah well not and even... i think it's also because they were like clouded by the dark dark side yeah because, especially in the movies like yeah. i don't even think it's necessarily their peak but I, I think in the movies you're getting to the point and in tales of the jedi you're seeing more of like the jedi are here with the senate and the republic they're almost like police mm -hmm. and then soldiers and mm -hmm. instead of being peacekeepers instead of being like there for the galaxy like essentially when this separatist and republic war started why aren't there Jedi on the Separatist side? There's, yeah. you know, there's yeah. heroes on yeah. both sides. Not yeah. we see so many times when like here's these senators from the Separatist side. They weren't evil. They were mm -hmm. trying to do what they thought was best for their people too. Yeah. But yeah. there's no Jedi over there. Mm -hmm. So I think not only is there an idea of bringing balance to the Force, I think the Jedi have gotten off balance and have lost their way a bit too. Mm -hmm. And I think sure they all die, but we're you get into like Rise of Skywalker and the Last Jedi and stuff. And there's kind of a push of like you know the Jedi why, the Jedi way isn't necessarily the right way. There's the force, and the force needs to be in balance, yeah. and the Jedi have lost their way. And it's why their ego and the cloudiness of the dark side doesn't allow them to realize that they're being led by a Sith mm -hmm. master, you know? Yeah. But you can also see yeah. even on, in those books that that's where they're headed. Yeah, Because some sure. of them already are like this vein, and they're, you know, 
they think that the way they do things is the way just the, the it, rest of the galaxy the should do it, yeah. right? Yeah. We yeah. need to go to these the outer Yoda, rim planets. The Mace Windu. I feel right? like yeah. every planet should have a Jedi. You yeah. know, then like mm -hmm. you're, you're always advocating for that. Planet. So they they did like they when they were expanding the galaxy into mm -hmm. like the outer rim, they had like Jedi stations. wayfinders. Yes, and, but yeah. even like politically, like if yeah. you know, for our yeah. separatist planets should have had Jedi. That's yeah. a great idea. Just have it on both sides for an unbiased kind of. I think that the take. I yeah. think the Jedi on Coruscant, like that, spend most time on Coruscant, were the most sitting on their ass. Yeah, they were, they were the right. most messed up. And I think Dooku's path is one of the best examples of why he switches to the to join Darth Sidious. Yeah, is because he's seeing like the Jedi aren't standing for what they should, and the yeah. Republic is being corrupted. Now he doesn't know how much he he himself is being manipulated by everything. I don't think, but it you, starts from you a can, good place every yeah, time. Yeah, you can understand why he goes the direction he goes. For sure, especially so, with that Tales of the Jedi episode. Yeah. He's with uh, Qui Gon. I mean, like you just you figure out like okay, Dooku was never that evil of a person. Like he started just to care for the things that the Jedi naturally should have been caring about. Mm -hmm. That idea that the Jedi way, the, uh, Rise of Skywalker when she starts to get into the or not Rise of Skywalker, um, Last, Last Jedi. Jedi when she goes into the cave and he's like, you went right to the dark side and it, it feels like they're gonna build on the concept of a like gray Jedi. Who's just like, mm -hmm. you know, I just I walk this line down the middle. It feels like that that is probably where they kind of wanted to take those ideas because the seeds of them are there where mm -hmm. she has no affiliations. She's got no intentions. She's just yeah. doing what feels natural to her and kind of taking it as it goes. And I think that 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 movie had that potential to kind of bring that to the theatrical forefront because mm -hmm. like you get like you, neutral Jing. From yeah, Earth. yeah. Just being like, hey, guess what? Um, you know we've been wrong with like right now this thing is bad and like yeah let's fight it together but we don't have to have these structural things put in place like if jedi are supposed to i'm one with the force the force is with me like mm -hmm. then you don't need that structure you can just be as you are and figure things out having that that you know the compromise the peacekeeper idea i think is about finding that balance between whatever this argument is mm -hmm. where can we come in the middle of this and find a balance instead of just one side or the other yeah, yeah. yeah. the jedi of the of the clone wars they're so afraid that they're going to corrupt themselves by making choices for others that they say, okay, well, the Republic will actually tell us where to go, who to save, that type of thing, because at least trust that's the, the will of a, of a greater mm -hmm. people. We're not using our power to take that over. Sokovia Accords, man. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's, and that's the exact thing that Palpatine turns on the Jedi. Yeah. They're plotting to take over. They're trying to do that. It's the one thing they tried not to do, and yeah. Palpatine used it against them. <laughs> it, it, isn't it built on top of the old... Yeah, uh, so the Jedi Council is on top of yeah. a Sith temple. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Marquesa was telling me about that. The idea being that this place of great evil can be neutralized by a place of great good, right? Uh, mm. And again, that's hubris. Like, how dare the Jedi think that they control can control something like that? Mm. And Sidious uses that. That's actually the catalyst of the Veil of the Dark Side, where he takes their ability to see the future. Mm. Yeah. I think that the. The like Jedi earlier before Clone Wars, mm -hmm. like in the High Republic, were also more nurturing yeah. towards their Padawans, because there is one um, Padawan in the in those books, uh, Belzedafar. Yep. And he's able, he is allowed to keep a pet. Yeah. Aww, and that's cute. Yeah. I <laughs> feel like, and and this is this is this is a Padawan that also experiences a lot of loss, mm -hmm. and. I feel like him being able to keep that pet around is something that helped him a lot, and. All the all the like Jedi masters also love this pet, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like this. This I feel like would not be allowed in yeah. Clone Wars mm -hmm. Jedi universe, like because it's just no attachments whatsoever. Well, it's that's just, the whole point of Ahsoka, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ahsoka, but even R two, right? Remember R two yeah. lost that yeah, arc yeah, yeah. where mm -hmm. Anakin refuses to give up, and oh, everyone's like, droid. everyone's like, he's just a droid. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. To the point in Episode four, he doesn't even remember R two. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. up, Luminaires? Uh, <laughs> Luminara. <laughs> Luminara. Her. Uh, her <laughs> Barisafi. Mm -hmm. um, when Baris. her She's and the Ahsoka that... are both stuck, and Anakin's like, nah, and Luminara's like. Yeah, and then what happens to her? And then and she, yeah, uh -huh. and she, yeah, and then she get a uh, Soki kicked off the force. And yeah, she breaks yeah. bombed the yeah. building. Wonder, is just... it because you left her in a bunch of rubble and was like, hey, fuck it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I That's feel like a... if the Jedi were more nurturing towards their Padawan and more nurturing towards Anakin, mm -hmm. when. Like clearly, that that's what he needed. He needed love. He needed love. He needed, I think he love. needed belonging. I think, I think and there's a reason that the Force placed Anakin 
to a slave woman on Tatooine outside mm -hmm. the Republic, so the Jedi couldn't get to him. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, Qui-Gon Jinn, the one Jedi that actually lives in the moment, sees something special in that kid and refuses the Jedi way, refuses yeah. not to train him. That's why Duel of the Fates is such an important fight. I mean, it's fun to watch, of mm -hmm. course, but if Qui-Gon were to live, he would have he not different. raised Anakin as a Jedi. I think that he would have raised Anakin as a true Force user. Anakin needed have. that father figure and not yeah. like that brother figure exactly. he gets from Obi Wan. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a great song, but that's Damn. why that's called. There's so many the like <laughs> Anakin's like life had so many different paths it could have taken did. Yeah. in so many different ways. I'm just so sad. There's so many moments Sorry. where you're like, okay. and like when you watch Episode Three, you're like, come on, maybe this time he won't do yeah. it. You know, but there's so many moments through Clone Wars, through <laughs> yeah. the movies, where you're like, if mm. this would have happened instead, maybe we'd be on a different. And in that finale, when they keep, it feels like. God. Feels like he's on a highway and they keep giving him exits. Yep. Yeah, and right. He keeps getting exits and he's just flooring it's, and they're like, hey, I, it's, something else is going on over here. You sure you don't want to come? Like, you don't want to come with us? He's like, we gotta go do this. I'm like, are you sure? Are you yeah. sure? Are you sure? It's like it's yeah. like the universe is yeah. trying to be like, hey, are you sure about that? <laughs> you see all these pieces that Palpatine has been playing this whole time, like you said, taking over without force, yeah. but more just like chess pieces. Yeah. It's scary Convince to think your, about in yeah. real life who's Who's playing chess like that right now in real life with like the like a, who has a lot of power politically, lobbyist or whatever, when you start thinking about that, like man, hey man. those people are probably playing those games too in a way. The, the original well, the original trilogy was a commentary on the Vietnam War, and guess what? America wasn't the rebels. Nope. Mm. The nope. pre the prequels yeah. was yeah. a commentary on George W. Bush in the Middle East, and guess what? You yeah. know. Yeah. What? You, yeah. Hey, you get that you get yeah. the, the politics out of my Star Wars. <laughs> oh, I mean, even if you take, you know, if you take like all these like allegories to real mm -hmm. life out of the equation, yeah. you have the rebel forces that are very diverse. You do. Like you have all these different species kind of like working together to overthrow fascism. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then you have the fascism, which is yeah. all the same person wearing <laughs> the same shit, like saying the same things and probably yeah. eating the same slot. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's I that Andor shows that the freaking oh, absolutely the, the idea of terrorists versus freedom. Mm. Yeah. And it's just like, where's that line? And it's it's the an uncomfortable <laughs> conversation to have. Yeah, because like we live in an ever changing world, and like. Mm -hmm. Obviously, people are gonna map their true beliefs onto like what they're watching, yeah. and like watching Andor is why I think it's one of the best. Is because it's just like here's a here's Fifty Shades of Grey. It truly feels like one of the first adult-oriented shows. Mm -hmm. Sure, George Lucas was very adamant. He's like, yeah, I want everybody to enjoy this, but I need eight-year-olds to understand it. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Andor. I don't know if eight-year-olds gonna understand everything that happens there, but we certainly it's we see that experience that we had. Whereas eight-year-olds, they. They are getting lessons and morals about their future, but we watch Andor and we think of our past mm -hmm. and what we've gone through. Which is really I mean, even really with cool tone. with following up with Rogue One too, like they're they're all rogues. They've all come from these different mm -hmm. places. They're running a resistance. It's, I mean, Star Wars is it is what it is. Like if you don't know what it is, watch it. Ask yourself <laughs> what yeah. they're portraying, and it's it's all right there. Yep. It's not. It's not subtext. It is the text. Yeah. Sure. I just I get so energized talking about Star Wars with you guys. So like <laughs> I really appreciate it. Like my love for it has grown just this past two days hanging out with you guys. Same. And like <laughs> that's such a cool effect that you guys have personally, but it also speaks volumes to like why this property is still out there. And I know a lot of people like to bash Star Wars for like stretching the nostalgia and kind of going back. But when it's done right, boy, God, is it yeah, so right. good. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, while you're here, can I ask a quick grand Star Wars timeline question? Okay. Yes. Was it? Was <laughs> quick it, or grand? Just a quick, a quick <laughs> question about the grand, the grand timeline. timeline. <laughs> was it the Old Republic, like Knights of the Old Republic? That was the first kind of era we know. That's as far back as we know. Mm -hmm. And then it was High Republic when the Jedi were in their well, prime. Was you're Old just, Republic with the Sith yeah, was in their prime? But when it comes to Old, High, that type of thing, it's all the same continuity of government. It's all the same government. Those are just eras. Yeah, yeah so that. like the, the Old... The old is when Jedi were more being hunted, or like the dark side was more. The old the, Republic uh, is the, actually, you know, there, there's in terms of canon. I mean, we can talk about that. But yeah, yeah. if we're talking about like the Xbox PC game, the Knights of the Old Republic that came out, yeah. not you know 2013 or I can't remember exactly. What yeah. it was. Um, it was actually. before that. Yeah, but that really 95? goes into the Jedi 
in the war with Mandalorians, and there's a well, and the and the Sith, and like the, the Sith, Sith well. aren't just down to Palpatine and the rule of two and stuff a lot. A lot of the old Republic stuff, there's an you get army, way yeah. back to where like there is an army of Sith, and yeah. there is an yeah. army of Jedi, and there is a war between the two. Yeah, and God. then when you get into the High Republic, we've the Sith have dwindled down. The Sith are gone now. Okay. We've had other things happen, and now there's the Jedi, and then there's you know whatever other forces that they have to deal and with. From and the and High Republic, we move into kind yeah. of the Clone Wars era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more yeah. into like episode yeah. one and Clone Wars and all that stuff. Okay. So pretty much the idea of being this giant bell curve where like they, the galaxy starts, they create hyperspace engines, mm -hmm. they come together and everything goes great and you get to the High Republic and then things start to get bad and then Palpatine takes over. You know, oh. like mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's the basic idea of the continuity of, yeah. of a galactic yeah. uh, And it always ebbs government. and flows like that. Yeah, yeah. Life yeah. in the real world. Now, right? Exactly <laughs> what Luke Skywalker says in The Last Jedi. Yeah. Life, death, death that brings forth new life you know me growing up on a farm like uh, seasons crop rotation you mm -hmm. have to you know you have to burn the forest for new stuff to come up yep. you know mm -hmm. like it's a it's a really cool allegory for a lot of systems that we have in life but just life in general yeah, yeah. yeah. I do hope that because it was talk that they were gonna make the KOTOR a remake game and yeah. I was like I, I, I heard that's happening I, still I, I, I've, I've heard back and forth so I hope they do because yeah. my hopes with that was either one we'll just get a cool game that you know I played back when I was younger and I'd yeah. love to do that again or two sometimes they do that thing where it's like we're gonna toss this out there and seed this yeah. and maybe change it to where now we're gonna bring that in because yeah, they, be they're doing the High Republic now but yeah. they haven't canon canon wise they haven't really gone to the old republic anymore i would so. love a there. star wars show yeah. in any of those eras yeah. yeah like any of the old or high republic sure i, think I would, would be very interesting so a good way to think about it too with what you know is like high republic yoda is still there yeah when you get to the Damn. old republic yoda's not there. No yoda. Yeah. so okay. he doesn't he wasn't exist oh, been in the yeah he wasn't born yet i guess <laughs> he doesn't exist he's 900 well he's 900 years old, yeah. old and well, empire strikes yeah, back yeah. and all that right so when you when you go back to high republic that's still within that thousand oh, years yeah. right I think it's yoda right. Years he was with yoda then <laughs> no, yeah. not even. i would he say was, he's he an adult he's yeah i'd say he's like Four, five hundred, maybe yeah. at okay. the youngest, probably. That's yeah. But then you get in the old republic; it's before him. So that yeah. that's a kind of a good way to kind of help. Okay. Are you so, saying that Grogu sees Din Djarin as a pet? It's possible. <laughs> hey, you want to, Chewbacca probably sees Han Solo as a pet right? too. Right? Yeah, Chewbacca. Yeah, <laughs> Think about the advantage that a, a species like Yoda has when it comes to possession. Of knowledge. Because well, even just like. Well, people, the, right? The, the people, friends, relationships. It's going to come and go, and it's not mm. going to matter to you as much yeah. because you're so long-lived. Mm. Like, just imagine like going to school, and every year is a new class mm, yeah. that you don't yeah. get a chance to develop with. So it's a lot easier for someone like Yoda to be like, hey, just learn to give up and <laughs> rejoice when someone becomes a force. And Anakin Skywalker, who grew up a slave and had nothing, is like, this is all I have, and it's all that's yeah. important to me, and you're, you're telling me to not have it? Yeah. yeah. That is a really good Yoda's, yeah. Bro. At the same time, like, Yoda... I don't know people die. That's what they do around yeah. me. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Be chill. Yoda knows when to take care of business, though, too. Because oh, in episode three, yeah. like, I, I'm thinking about how Rex and Ahsoka were stunning and not refusing to actually kill their brothers, but Yoda in episode three just slices those clones down I'm like uh -uh. throws in the chest yeah. jumps on him chest yeah. Yeah. out yeah. jumps on him right. that makes sense now yeah I think also what's that it's one of the first arcs in Clone Wars when Yoda's with uh, the troops and they're just doing like crazy guerrilla warfare and Yoda's like nah, we'll be chilling kind of hanging back don't yeah. worry we got this and it's like they don't show him doing that a lot actually I I think that might be the only arc in all Am of Clone Wars. Is ambush? It? It's an episode called yeah. Ambush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the it's only technically time. the first episode ever made. Yeah. It was the nice. only one you really see Yoda like getting it, and it's yeah. like to prove, but also to prove that it's not about him like going hand to hand, but him being like, "Bro, I'm old. I think I know every play in the book. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. just sit back and be chill." And the clones are like, "Well, we're ten, and we yeah. are yeah, nerds." We're and he's like, yeah. It's fine. I, we're gonna get through this. I got you. That I think that's the episode that we probably reference almost. More than any other, just because of that lesson that you, when he sits down with the clones mm -hmm. and he says, "Hey, take your helmet off. Mm -hmm. You guys are all individual. I can tell. He can just sense that they're individuals, yeah. even though they all have the same face." And he also talks about how they can use the Force just to quiet their mind. Yeah, you know. So the idea like that, that Jedi that have a lot of midichlorians, well, they're so blessed because of this. Like they're not really blessed. They didn't win the genetic lottery. They won the genetic draft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? it's such a difference mm -hmm. of how the Jedi look at the clones from like how Yoda looks to how Anakin looks at him to how Krell looks at them. Oh my god, like Krell, yeah, Man. General Krell. Do you guys remember him? Yes. yes, oh yes. god, Umbara, yeah, the Umbara. Never forget, yeah. mm -hmm. like it's, it's crazy. Like, you can see all these different ways of like 
Yeah, clones don't matter. Clones are individuals, and then Anakin's like, "These are my friends." Yo, like, Anakin, I, he, I, I will fight. They're his brothers. Them, you know, like, yeah. He sees nice. himself as one of yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. It was nice when they all gave themselves like names too. They're like, "We're more than numbers." Yeah. 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 Even though he was five. So. I mean, <laughs> I mean, five's still a name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Did oh, you have more? Qu- I feel like we've gone all. Did you I know we plan. went the distance. I'm pretty good about just we've transitioning been, into it, so I've covered yeah. a lot of this. I've stuff. had I've had two more things I was kind of wanting to talk about. We've been going all around different places and stuff. I did want to ask because, like, uh, Runa, you had said that, you know, I, I can't remember all the episode names and all that kind of stuff, which I understand there's a lot of them and stuff. But for each of you guys, is there like an arc or a story or an episode where you're like, this one just really stands out that I just, it's just one of my favorites. That like I just really enjoy. When you think of the Clone Wars, what do you think of mm. like, in terms of like an actual one of Man, okay. I don't remember. Again, I'm so sorry with this. No, that's stuff. fine. I'm bad with it. But there's that one arc where we're with the, the clones are fighting other clones and they, they didn't know they were fighting their own brothers. Yeah. Umbara. Yeah. Umbara. General Krell. Yeah. Yeah. Umbara arc, guys. That like, one's, I think, that was one of the top, top tier list. for me oh my god i'll never forget that that's I mean, when i think about the clone wars i think about that because yeah. like it, again they're just being their pawns are being used and dehumanized in so many yeah. freaking yeah. ways and i feel like that's again what clone wars is about is about them yeah and i, I just want to mention real quick yaddle yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really it's there's so many really great arcs probably better than the one i'm about to say the ep- single episode i'm about to say but i really like the initial domino squad episode yeah. just yeah. because yeah. they are training together they learn how to fight and then they have to defend well that might have been a separate episode where they where they get killed off but too. You think so one, I'm, I'm combining they're... both. So yeah, those. there's yeah. their training episode where like yeah. the dominoes are trying to beat their training, and then there's yeah. rookies, which is like yes. technically the yes. first domino squad episode. Yeah, but chronologically, we, we watched it. You guys also we had the benefit it. of watching this yeah. chronologically. Yeah. Whenever yeah. we were watching it live, oh, no. oh God. we were going back and forth, no. and everybody told George like it's a mistake, you can't do this, and he's like, <laughs> I got four billion reasons <laughs> why you can watch stuff. Oh, fun bucks, I don't care. Yeah, but. It's uh, it was definitely a benefit you guys watching through the, chronologically. The Domino Squad, like, it, it's hard to say arc, but like the episodes you get yeah. where you keep getting the Domino Squad does so much yeah. for like here are clones and you yes. attach to them. I mean, yeah. and you lose slowly, one every episode, yeah. too, and it hurts. Yeah, and you're like, no. Yeah. That's the real personality. Like the all the points we're hitting on why the clones are so great. I feel like Domino Squad kind of etched that in or started yeah. that yeah. off really well. And thematically, every domino falls. Yeah. 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 Um, no. we, what about but, you, Kenny? What well, we got, Echo? Um, and like, just just the fact that as with all the dominoes and the butterfly effect, if CT555 didn't warn Rex, we wouldn't have gotten Ahsoka out of there. So many things wouldn't have happened. And yeah, so, like, Rex might have not for a reason. Might not have fought that off as much, you know. Like, sure, yeah. he has that connection with Ahsoka. Yeah. But knowing that, did that also help him to know, or give enough information to Ahsoka to yeah. know? I think exactly. there's two reasons Ahsoka survives that Order sixty six. One, it's Anakin's training. Yes. Two, it's Rex hesitated. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. Rex doesn't hesitate. You know, mm-hmm. the he idea does not of hesitate. the idea of in the fantasy show magic and curses like they. they you can break them with knowledge. Mm-hmm. Just that little crumble of knowledge was enough for him to just crack through and tell Ahsoka something's wrong. Damn, yeah. Defend I love yourself. That. Could have been the Force that helped him yeah, see it. Like, yeah. as you said, like I, I like the Yoda moment with the clones because even in real life, superpowers don't exist. But if there were a Force or a superpower, maybe we can at least tap into a marginal bit of it to help ourselves, to calm our mind, we, to meditate. We at least whatever. understand different mindsets. And like one day, you know, I'm just having a bad day and it's, it can affect a show that you watch, a movie, a mm-hmm. friendship, sure. a relationship. Mm-hmm. But the next day, things are different. You don't really know why. And when you sit down and try to think, why is that? It's like, well, I just had a lot of weird stuff in my head yeah, that morning. I was just off. You yeah, I was just off. off. And I was, what's one of your that favorite? was me last night. <laughs> uh, art, yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to mention the Domino the Domino Squad as well. Yeah. Especially the the janitor. Oh, uh, 99. 99. 99. Oh, RIP. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and him giving, yeah. giving up his life to protect his brothers that was great did did you guys make the connection that bad batch is called clone force 99 oh, oh. named after 99 because oh. they're all yeah. defense they're all right? defense yeah. Yeah. he That's didn't awesome. have the advantage he had the disadvantage Poor one out for I'm a soldier him. yeah right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but since we talk about that i would mention the yoda arc yeah that was great and Going i was so and sad i wasn't yeah. here for that yeah. Oh, yeah. you missed it? Yeah, she had like a Dark Zipper or something. I was yeah. like, damn, Marquette was missing the episodes made for her. The, uh, the yeah. Wellspring of the Force and the mm-hmm. Force yes. Priestess that yes. we saw there. I, yeah. I love that. And I love the mask, uh, the masked um, figures. We yeah. got the yeah. three figures. of them. Yeah, when, yeah. They, when they started like moving yeah. and the, the faces started like switching. Yeah. 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 It looks like they're smiling and uh, like getting yeah. mad. And you're, like, yeah. isn't, that, isn't that so interesting that Yoda learns how to become one with the Force by people that wear 
emotions on their face as masks, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But the Jedi, they're not hiding. The Jedi yeah. are trying to keep emotions at bay. Yeah. But the real secret is yeah. to make Learn. you gotta feel that. I think yeah. I think that one of the lessons of Star Wars in general is just like the dangers of taboo. Yeah. And when there's yeah. something that you just claim is just too dangerous or too vulgar or mm-hmm. too just inappropriate, then y- you are actually blinding yourself from the dangers of that thing like yeah. instead you should study it and you should like learn from it agreed um and like that also showed in that arc so that's why i liked it a lot yeah i agree it's the, mm-hmm. it's the it, it tells you why it's okay to be a rebel and why it's okay yes. for the system that you're born to might be easy but it's not necessarily right for sure mm-hmm. uh i think i can't think of arcs right now and i do think one don't want to let it be known or anyone think that I don't love the clones or love any of our heroes. You but dick. Anything with Ventress in it <laughs> is always great. Yep. I love seeing her. Angelina yeah. Jolie. <laughs> Huge crush on her. She's terrifying. But like seeing her and Obi Wan kind of like play off of each other, it's always my like, dear Obi. It's always like, <laughs> what are y'all, what are y'all about? Oh, they, yeah, what's going on? He's, he, he's always flirting the back. Right. Yeah. Like, I get the sense that they're fighting each other, yeah. but I never get the sense that they're actually trying to kill each other. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> the kill where Ventress kisses the clone trooper. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. So dark. That was they cut that scene from the Cartoon Network airing. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> yep. uh, so dark. So Ventress, I, we love watching the villains. I think Ventress is always, whenever she's on screen, crazy when she becomes a bounty hunter, mm-hmm. even even better. Like I will, like I just previously said, I will watch an entire Ventress series. I'm probably going to read this comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cat, it's a book. Uh, I was about to say Cat Bane. Cat Bane Cat is Bane. Um, <laughs> always, Bane. always fun. Like these. He's got the voice, he's got the gadgets. Like the bounty hunters in Star Wars is another part of Star Wars mm-hmm. that runs just as deep as any of, well, I guess it's kind of a part of the Western themes. Yeah. But like, I love that portion of it. And whenever we can get into these bounty hunters, mm-hmm. the one dude who was uh, chasing after Clovis and them, he's got the dog, he's got the Embo. samurai hat. Embo. Embo. Yeah. Man. He was in the Seven <laughs> Samurais episode. Like, uh-huh. they. They go they go out of their way to I got IG like eleven. IG eleven like, they go out of their way to like show you like, hey, here's these unique cool bounty hunters mm-hmm. and they're like great foils against our heroes, but they're never really like villains. It's just a sure. Joke. And like Hondo and them, the episode where Hondo's drunk, like I whenever Hondo's on screen, I hate him, I love him. Yeah. Like, give, me, love Hondo. give me Hondo. Give me I, Hondo. I was Lord. super upset <laughs> in this last episode of Mandalorian, I was like, bro, if Hondo's on that uh, ship, I'm gonna lose my mind. And they gave us a really yeah. good character who kinda had um uh, Davy Jones vibes and he's very piratey yeah. and it's like but it could have been Hondo. Sure. It could have been. If it would have been old. Uh, have you guys ever been to Galaxy's Edge at Disney World? Uh, oh, we were. Didn't we go? Yeah, yeah we were there. Um, yeah, we, we went to three of us. 2019. They did the VR thing. Yeah. We did the Chris, We did the VR Chris thing, but the, the, the Galaxy's oh. Edge is where the, uh, yeah. where the um, Millennium Falcon's at, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. We were there. If, Dude, if, if, when you go, now that you've watched Clone Wars too, like, Galaxy's Edge is actually run by Hondo Anaka, who yeah! is. He's oh trying God. to take your money. Dude, it felt <laughs> like, it this felt venture so is profitable. Real. It felt so you could smell like the smoke. Ah. You could feel the heat. Yeah. It was crazy. I was like hiding behind Chris. I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, they, but no, he, there's an animatronic of Hondo, and he's up there like, yes, buy, sell, take Dude, it. That's a legendary <laughs> voice actor, too. Yeah. Yeah. Winnie, the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Keep Cummings, man. Disney. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Coming yeah, he's he been does, in popcorn, uh, indie popcorn. In the he does so <laughs> many voices and stuff. Yeah. I, w- I will we, never forget when Hondo was just shot up by Ahsoka and the kids, and just drunk. like, and just like should have had concussion. Which like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> just keep no, no, again, that's yeah. what like, uh, and they do a good job. It's the levity they do that. Mm-hmm. They the tone like for, for yeah. kids. When they're able to give you that tone, it's great. Hondo's a, a really good character. Yeah. A, uh, Ventress, great. I love the, the betrayal when Dooku betrays her, and she's got to go in there on some SEAL Team Six and poison him, and he fights him, but he's blind. Yeah. And every time Dooku fights, and he's just styling on him, it's something about the way they're able to do animation that gives him his moves aren't robotic, but they are they're pinpoint. Yeah. The, there's never a moment where Dooku's moving and like. You tell that, oh, that's extra. He's just like, I'm here. He doesn't I'm here. waste energy. Well, it's like he's fencing. Yeah, he's like, I'm winning. And he's like, we're just, we're doing this. We have to do this. But mm-hmm. like, don't worry, I've already won. And like, so whenever they give you the villains in Clone Wars and they give you a decent villain arc, if it's Dathomir, if it's a bunch of bounty hunters, if it's Cat Bane, if it's... What's that clicky to get? 
Uh, General. Oh, yeah. Uh, Trench. 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 Bush. Yeah. Quick, I Trench. love him. Admiral Trench. Admiral, Admiral Trench, Trench RIP. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they do. Anakin. They do him really good. Yeah, he did. I thought he was going to curl I up all the time. so annoying weakness. hearing him talk. <laughs> yeah, that was so awesome, dude. I love that. Every time Anakin did a kill, I'm like. Well, exactly. Like, love... you don't want him to do it, <laughs> but you want him to do I it. Love, yeah. I love the one with, uh, I think it was a Satine arc where. The guy's like, I'm gonna blow up the ship, right? And he's like, Shh, oh, yeah. right? Yep. And Obi Wan's like, Anakin. It's like, what? He was gonna blow up the ship. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me? Yeah, to do? the guy. The guy says like, which one of you is gonna be a cold blooded killer? And then a blue lightsaber comes what? out of his chest. Mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, I didn't even hear what you said. What did you say? <laughs> I was gonna do yeah. the same. Like, that wasn't the answer to the quip. I was just gonna. Yeah, do it. yeah, yeah you know he would done. judge Batman for leaving Joker alive. Oh, bro. <laughs> yeah. So what was the what was the other question? Um, another one I was gonna ask was about, and you guys have kind of covered a lot of it, but maybe. Maybe just to clarify, characters that aren't like major characters, especially like from the movies and that kind of stuff, like no Soka, but yeah. like who are some favorite characters that stood out that you guys talk about like Hondo, you guys have talked about, you know, clones and that kind of stuff too, but like, mm -hmm. do you have characters from the Clone Wars series where you're like, I'm so glad I watched Clone Wars to get to meet this character that I would have never met otherwise? Gattle. Yeah. I like more Plo Kloon. She's not even. Yeah. I know Plo that he's Kloon. in a he's in a in the in the movies, but you Fair get enough. a lot of Plo Kloon. And I don't know his uh the way he he talks to um Ahsoka, the, their relationship. I, I like Ahsoka. that a lot. And I like uh, his squad. Uh, the Wolfpack. Wolfpack. Wolf pack. Wolf pack. Yeah. I, he's a yeah. uh, he's a really cool one. I don't know what it is about him. It's his demeanor. Yeah, comes across a lot in the show, and I don't know how you pin that, but like yeah, it's I, that, it's that's... so funny too because <laughs> Dave Filoni from the beginning said like, I don't know why I love Plo Koon. <laughs> it's just his design. Yeah. But if when you start looking at more Dave Filoni stuff, he he, he loves Plo Koon, he loves hockey, and he loves wolves. Okay. Wolves, he loves wolves. <laughs> and yeah, as, you, as you're watching through stuff that he's done, you're gonna start finding a lot more, like he did this in Avatar The Last Airbender okay. too, a lot of wolf stuff. Yeah. What, about, what about you, Kat? <laughs> I guess Savage Opress. Savage. Yeah. Yes. Clancy Brown. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Yes. Yes. Clancy Mr. Brown. He's not in. His voice. I mean, he's. I haven't met Savage Opress in any of the movies, no. right? No. Or no. Any, he's anything. He's dead. Yeah, so, yeah, that was. The only, Clone Wars is the only property that I know him from. Yeah. If he was in a movie, he'd have been played by the mountain, and it would have been wild. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he's actually yes, the great. only character to fight every. Sith Lord in the current Star yeah. Wars. He fought Maul, mm -hmm. he fought Dooku, he fought Anakin, and yeah. he fought Palpatine. Dang! Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That's a and nice little that's a bunch. belt to have. And Mother Talzin. Mother I, Talzin. I, I want to know yes. more about the way she is. Yeah. Voiced by Rita Repulsa from Whoa! Power Rangers. Yeah, man. Seriously? I love it. Yeah. Make my monster grow! Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna so get much. a witch, you gotta get Rita <laughs> nice. Repulsa. Yep. 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 You don't know how her magic works for real. I love when uh, she's like making Dooku sick and he's just like getting boils and throwing up. She's like, kill her now! Yeah. 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 He almost, he almost she did it. came out of his yeah. chest. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Dude, that was almost it. Bro. <laughs> Too much power, bro. Yeah, if you can make Count Dooku afraid, you, yeah, you got something Dookie. going. Yeah. Yeah. Little dookie. Yeah. I like uh, Rex. We haven't really yeah. like we mentioned him a couple times, but mm -hmm. I I do like his character. He served up yeah. a lot of badass moments, a yeah. lot of cool kills and gunshots. But um, just how much he meant to Ahsoka at the end and giving him and Ahsoka the focus for the finale. Yeah. Like a part yeah, of me yeah. was like, oh, are they gonna adapt like certain scenes from the movie in like the animated form just to like remind us this is where we're at? But no, like they're like our fans are smart enough. They're gonna know where we're at. We're gonna drop yeah. just the audio clues and visual clues to know mm -hmm. where they're at sync to the movie. So let's just focus on the clones and Ahsoka, who were yeah. like the heart of the show, the new thing to the show. Yeah. And Rex and Ahsoka specifically. Like I'm glad he lived because I was like pretty ready for him to die. I'm like, well that's gonna be emotional. Like they're gonna yeah. Rex is gonna turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't expect them to bring him back from the brink. Yeah, yeah. you figured he'd turn, die, something like that. And yeah. it's a yeah, mm -hmm. I like his story. Runa, did you? Uh, oh, Runa, did you go? Yeah, Yaddle. Oh. Yeah, Yaddle was in Technically, show. Yaddle's in Tales of the Jedi. Yeah. Well, not it. It's Clone Wars era. What yeah, about you guys? Yeah, true. Like, are there characters in Clone Wars the secondary characters that you just like really like? Mm. I, I mean, it's not. Uh, Hondo obviously is a, a big one, but I I'm like what they one. did with young Boba Fett. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that the assassination mission on Mace Windu, yeah. especially. Yeah. Yes. I really love that. Like he put a bomb in Jango's helmet. <laughs> 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 like I, I really like that. But I also like the Asaz Ventress Boba Fett stuff, where Ventress is becoming more of a bounty mm -hmm. hunter. She yeah. sees this like kidnapped girl and kind of mm -hmm. sees herself in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. 
yeah. chooses the path to make a bunch of money off of yeah. it. Yeah. Like, kind of can't be mad at that. Or yeah. when her and uh, Ahsoka are like running around in like the depths of Coruscant together, yeah. it's like, oh, <laughs> do you two are kind of a team up that I'm here for. Yeah. I, I do mourn not being able to get the Cad Bane Boba Fett confrontation mm. that never happened yeah. and became such a crux in the Boba Fett yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like Boba in that show is kind of meant to like, okay. I'm not the baddest bounty hunter anymore, but he has to fight essentially himself and in the baddest bounty yeah, hunter. But yeah. we didn't really get. I'm that. hoping we. I hope Cad Bane isn't really dead. We'll like, see. I mean, there was, yeah. there's a theory that it could happen, but I think it, that it was such a cool reveal. I'm like, yeah. how about you get rid of him so quickly? Then, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's what it is. If you're asking me for like the very special moments, I don't know why I rewatch this episode all the time, but R2 and 3PO. Demolishing that little planet <laughs> and changing in a whole government yes. accidentally is what because they're like I don't know exactly what they were doing. <laughs> but your voices. I love those yeah. like Gulliver yeah. travels, <laughs> weird Lucas stuff. Yeah. yeah, that that type of thing is like I don't know. I think of Clone Wars. I think of that type of stuff. That's mm-hmm. awesome. The R two adventures were fun. I, I feel a certain type of way about C three PO. I know you do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's fine. There's like, nothing like wrong with him. He's not the C three PO. Is that the one where they were uh, stuck on the all white planet and they were trying to, or is that the one with the people who remember the little little people and yeah. he was like flying along him. You're talking about the uh, sunny day in the void. Yeah, it was it with, that one? Uh, no, no, no. Well, that was a different one. Okay. I'm talking about uh, the arc where they go down to that. Okay, thing, yeah, that yeah, 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 Tree people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the clones are like, we don't want to yeah. be yeah. here. What the hell's going hey, on? And then they make fun of him for knowing the episode names. I hear you yeah. get on my case for oh, lost. Uh, I don't. He knew the exact episode title just now. None of y'all batted an eye. Well, see, he's a guest here. <laughs> Any event I hang out with Eric on a daily basis, I'd be like, and, and he was just like, oh, that's episode five. Five from season six, and this is the title. This is who directed it. Okay, I mean, like, you, how do you remember hey, to put your pants on the right way? When I, Star Wars I grew up. I grew up very religious, and in my late teenage, early twenties, I kind of lost that and needed something to replace it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when I give okay. a sermon, it's okay. Okay. Star Wars. That is- <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so hilarious. yeah, when he asked me about like, well, what do you know? Yeah. It's like, well, I know the Bible real well, but I don't really care about it. <laughs> Star, Wars I care. Star Wars care about, yeah, yeah, that's kind of awesome. Yeah, um, for me, for the Clone Wars, like, uh, Darth Maul is one I would say, but like he's from the movies and stuff. But mm-hmm. the fact that he died and then what they did with him and how they, you know, made him, it's just such a great character. I think through just what four arcs maybe yeah. Yeah. Of, you know, he didn't yeah. get a lot of time yeah. in the grand scheme of it all. But I love what they did with it. Yes. Um, but as far as like new characters, I think uh, I think the two that stand out in my head are Ventress. Oh, I, I really like like where she starts and then where she ends up and stuff. Where it's like, you know, maybe she's not really just bad. <laughs> you know, maybe there's a little bit more. And like she has this history of like she used to be a Jedi. It's like mm-hmm. yeah. she lost her way a little bit, fell in with Dooku, and you know where could she be? Um, but also, uh, when it comes to bounty hunters and stuff, like I love Cad Bane, I love Boba and stuff, but Imbo is Imbo. so Imbo. cool. He's so Boba cool. He's got a wolf. Vo- voice by Dave Filoni. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I have a, yeah. a, vin- uh, 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 a Ventress question. Do you want her to beat you up? Because I kind of want her to beat you up. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. I probably need to talk to a therapist. My but like, dear, I, I kind of want her to beat me up. I don't know why. Yeah. If she appeared yeah. now, I'd be like, I don't want to get my ass kicked. And I don't yeah. know why I'm excited by him. I feel that way about Rebecca from Ted Lasso. Oh, my <laughs> Uh, up, I, there's so one well, uh, super minor character that I just want to give a shout out to you because I feel like it adds depth overall to the story. What did you? What do you call the? What was it? Interplanetary systems? What is that? Neutral systems. Yeah, the like their whole. They have that logo, and they're like they're representing the politicians on the side of the separatists. Oh, oh, the, the uh, Federation of, of Independent Systems. Yes, yeah. of Independent Systems. The, the dudes with the long noses, the Pad, long faces. Yeah, well, specifically Padme's friend that she knew. Close. That was uh, Bon Terry. Yeah, yeah it's, bon, it's, not, yeah, it's, it's not, not his mom. Luck, his mom. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I really oh, appreciated yeah, I that know. because the war almost came to an end through sheer politics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was like, oh, that, that was a nice arc, I feel like. that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, Showed that attempts were made, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, to go a different route. I, I, yeah. I agree with Aaron where I think one of the weaknesses of Clone Wars is it doesn't give enough context to the first line in the crawl of episode three. There are heroes on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that gives you a little that glimpse. A little that, taster. Yeah, the Separatist Parliament were really trying to, because guess what? It's just like with Darth Maul at the end. It's like, he's right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Name yeah. one thing he was wrong about. He's trying yeah. to stop the Sith, and so were the Separatists. They, the, yeah. the Republic was wrong. Yeah. The yeah. events that bring uh, all of this into happening, too, is about people expanding out into the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Halo, 
uh, deals with the exact same problem. The Expanse deals with the exact same problem. Uh, Firefly deals with the exact same problem. American history and history of the world deals with the exact same problem. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing problem that there's literally no solution for. As we tend to expand out, there's going to be... The, if the center of power is here, as it gets further and further out, people are going to be more and more independent. But because if we're talking about space, or if we're talking about living all around the world, it takes so much people and resources and energy to do it that it makes sense to work together. Yeah. But it's like a power structure, a government's power structure only has so far that it can expand mm-hmm. before it has to become its own thing. Mm-hmm. And trying to find the balance for that usually leads to conflict. Yeah. Literally, when people live on Mars... At some point well, in time, they're going to be like, why do we take orders from Earth anymore? It's also and because, it's going to be a thing. It's also because you don't do, like... Like, you, usually when you, like, expand, you're trying to expand. do, like... You're trying to push your culture or your mm-hmm. ideology or the way you do things onto those people. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, it's not really, like... It's more like a conquest. Mm-hmm. Like, um like a soft conquest yeah. where it's like cultural mm-hmm. and that's that is that cuts deeper I think than just if you're trying to just take over a country by force then like okay yeah. we know what you're doing the Huns did it sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> well <laughs> and you're far. you're dealing with that when going through High Republic era stuff right because mm-hmm. you're seeing them expand to the outer rim and it's like yeah. well these people just live here already yeah. They, yeah. some of them are fine some of them maybe are struggling a little bit more but mm-hmm. then they're coming being like yeah but we we figured it out and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll show you how yeah. you should figure it out it's and like what you the, need to like do. the um, savior Savior Complex. Savior mm-hmm. Complex. Did you guys watch Firefly? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like the brown coats, it's really hard to disagree with them. Mm-hmm. It's like super hard to be like, I mean, once again, they were separatists. They were technically terrorists, but yeah. it's like they were fighting to keep their own independence all the way out here when the government that I is controlling, they don't know, they don't know what the hell's going on. Cool. You know, there's giant planets and stuff. Bye, Bye Runner. I haven't even asked you so bad. Hey, uh, I'm going to shift it real quick. I know we're going along. I just want to say. Was there anything that could have been done once we found out about the whole Saifu Dyas Dooku thing commissioning the clones? I know the Jedi chose to not release it to the public because that would have been bad, but maybe not even release it to the public. Could they have not taken any other drastic action and be like, all right, this is a huge bomb dropped. we, We need to just take our collective as a Jedi and just distance ourselves from this immediately. Well, like, there's, would there, was there so anything that could have been done? There's a canon answer, and then there's the... It's not going to be a very satisfying answer yeah. for you, <laughs> but I can tell you exactly what happened, and then I can tell you that like it could have been done a little bit better, both in Episode 2 and in The Clone Wars. sifo as we learned from some other you know extra books, was kind of obsessed with prophecy, yeah. obsessed, and he was like plagued by visions of the future, yeah. sure. visions that Jedi didn't listen to. It, it wasn't even that he was obsessed with the prophecy himself, yeah. but he would see these things and then see that they would come th- come true as yeah. well. And then Dooku would be like obsessed with like these are prophecies and the Chosen One and all these kinds so of things. Sifo Dyas actually sees the coming of the Sith and the need for an army. The Republic refuses, so he just doesn't doesn't he does it anyway. Goes yeah. rogue. And then when they need it, hey, we have it. it it's already been negotiated. All this stuff. So oh what God. happens is the Republic's like, well, can we trust these clones? It's like, no, but we trust the Jedi, and we're going to put them in charge. We know the Jedi are going to take care of it because they're the guardians of peace and justice, and they'll make sure that the clones do everything we need to. Having no idea that that was the whole plan. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. Dooku knew. Because he was cool with Sifo Dyas. So they were best friends. They grew up. He together. literally was mm-hmm. like. So once Dooku turned, he was like, "Well, here's a perfect opportunity." Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, that that sheds. A and little I bit should more also life. say, like, it's one of those unfortunate things where it's like you know the mystery, you know yeah. the conclusion. The characters don't, and you're gonna rationalize things way different than someone that has no idea what to even think. Of course. Sure. Yeah. I just I like talking to you guys because it's like. I could look it up on Wikipedia, but you <laughs> you are like Wikipedia. He's a walking <laughs> Wikipedia. He does a really good job with knowing to talk to you guys I know about your guys' job just as much, you know, like sure. we have to worry about spoilers. You go on Wikipedia, you're going to see some rebel yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Some bad, bad yeah. stuff. Because it's such a tricky thing with that because like they're in a war. It's like, well, we can use them or we can't. But if we don't use them, lose the what do we have to, yeah. to yes. fight with, you know? So yeah. like ultimately like Palpatine and the way everything kind of works out he said it to where it's like no you don't really way. have a choice yeah. you know? I think Qui-Gon in episode one he talks to the queen he's like look I can protect you but I can't fight a war for you yeah. mm-hmm. the clones are in sifo like that's the war fight right there I think yeah. uh, the only thing the Jedi probably could have done hindsight being 2020 and all is <laughs> completely abdicated and just effed off completely and got out yeah. of there but once again the war would have been, been lost but... terrible for it I yeah. think the clones would have all risen because the, the, uh, the Jedi's are commanders in the army right 
They're generals. Generals, they're generals in the army. They could have given each clone general rank, like you know, mm-hmm. Cody here, Rex here. They could have figured that out and done that. But then it's all it's, it's still all would have came to fruition. Order sixty six still would have happened, and it just would have happened differently. Mm-hmm. Like they're even if they would have removed themselves completely. They were still going to lose. You watched cool. Palpatine enough to know that he had a plan for yeah. every contingency, every chance. Yeah. They've been planning yeah. it for a thousand Reg- It would have happened. It would have happened. Yeah. Regardless. It yeah. happened different, but they were still going to get got. They, But it's also a commentary on the Jedi. People like Mace Windu that Rose. they know what's going to happen. They have the power to see the Force. They don't, they're not thinking that the dark side is clouding their judgment. They would sense if something was wrong. It's the hubris. That's the hubris. And that's, the, yeah, that's how arrogant they became. That's why... Yeah. Yep. Anakin Skywalker turns so easy because he witnesses the Jedi make mistake after mistake mm-hmm. yeah. after mistake in telling mm-hmm. him you shouldn't love and you shouldn't covet. And he goes, man, it'd be great if I could just tell people what to do. No, yep. Because <laughs> I, I know what's right. Ahsoka takes the only right way out. She yeah. doesn't play the game. She does. And <laughs> I, I would say that's the, the benefit of Anakin's training because everything good Anakin was is in Ahsoka mm-hmm. and yeah. she's not a Jedi. I can't wait yeah. to see her in Rebels. I can't <laughs> yeah, so she can love if she wants to. She can. She's yeah. what an Anakin should have been. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a great segue into moving on. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that we were talking about with uh, with Star Wars is it is selfish to just keep it all for yourself. But we got the next generation to look forward to and you guys are going to be moving on to Star Wars Rebels, Rebels. next. Uh, it is important Exciting. to remember that like Clone Wars had a such a large time for its fans to grow with them. Rebels kind of brings it back. Like, you're going to start out with, this is a kid's show, and we're going to grow with it. So. <laughs> right. uh, but one That's thing good. that you're all going to have is Clone Wars kind of, like, spread itself very thin. Rebels is very contained. You're going to be following one crew. Yeah. And if I'm going to allow myself to give you one spoiler, because you just mentioned the man, Steve Bloom is on that cast. <laughs> Let's go! And, uh, it's a great oh, character. So really I can't oh, wait to follow. Go. So you guys got to make sure you're going over to the Normies uh, channel and checking out their Rebels uh, reactions. And their also Clone Wars Kills reactions. the Jedi, Clone Wars, Mando. Visions. Visions. <laughs> Andor. Yeah. All of the movies. Thank you guys for, for being here, for all your knowledge. Yes. And, and so much fun nerding out. Uh, mm-hmm. Just about being reaction channels yeah. also. Yeah. But yeah. with getting into the nitty gritty with stuff like this, it helps me appreciate the content just so much more. Like Serge said, it's only been like a day or two with you guys, but the yeah. love for Star Wars has grown up to here for yeah. all of us, yeah. I'm sure, being around you guys. <laughs> so yeah, your ship yeah. is... You gotta get we back on it. your ship now. We do, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us or coming to us. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm literally going to plan a galaxy's edge. Please give Obi a kiss my, for me. My reminder that I want to go back. Yes. Well, let me know. Maybe we'll have to do a joint venture. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Woo-hoo. That'd be fun. All right, guys. We'll Bye. see you back here at Wave Squadron. Bye. Bye. Bye.